Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So today we're doing another video on atomic structure and electron configuration. So let's get started. Bam! So today we're doing a video on electron configurations, orbital box diagram, and quantum numbers for copper. Again, you need a periodic table and the copper and find out where copper is. Okay? All right. So copper is a Z of 29. That means that the, the atomic number is 29. That means that there are 29 protons. And in a neutral element of copper, of which we are dealing with today, there are 29 electrons. And so that's why we're going to use this periodic table to get to our 29. Okay? All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the noble gas notation for copper. And we're going to find that here right now. So it's argon in brackets, 4s2, 3d9. All right. Hopefully that works out well for you. Now, that is most certainly a 3D. I've already discussed that before with the iron, but hopefully that still makes sense. I just wanted to note that again for you to make sure that you are still okay with that. All the Ds are one level less than the period, that is. How many valence electrons are there in copper? So valence electrons are the largest principal quantum number. That's a 4 in this case. S and P electrons, there's only an S, so there are two. So valence electrons are two. And hopefully you remember when we did valence electrons using the periodic table in the boot, that is, if it ends in a D or an F type of orbital, then it has two valence electrons. And this is why, because the largest principal quantum number is going to be a larger principal quantum number and the S's are going to be filled. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the orbital box diagram of this copper 29. Okay. All right. So. Let's do the orbital box diagram. Let's get that set up just like we have done before. Okay, now we have the 4S and we have the 3D. The S orbitals only have a single box. The Ds have five boxes. Doesn't matter how many electrons are in the 3D, You every time you have a D, you have five boxes. The boxes are attached. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill in these electrons as you are supposed to fill them in. And so that is an up, that's a down. Okay, those are anti-parallel. They are filled up in that one particular orbital. Now we're going to keep on going. That's an up. 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 Now we're going to backfill them. So this is Hun's rule already completed right there. Now we're going to backfill them and go to the original box within the 3D on the far left-hand side and do the anti-parallel spin of that. Down, 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 down. And now we're done. Okay, so... Now we're going to ask ourselves, is copper paramagnetic or diamagnetic? And paramagnetic has unpaired electrons. Diamagnetic has all paired electrons. Most elements are paramagnetic. That means that they are attracted to an electric field. So copper has one unpaired electron, so it is paramagnetic most certainly. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get a set of four quantum numbers to represent a particular electron, and I'm going to pick one here for you. I'm picking a random electron. I am not picking the last electron in the copper. If I were picking the last electron in copper, then I'd be able to use the periodic table to find out what I need, but I'm not, so I'm picking this electron. So the question is, what type of orbital is it in? What energy level? That energy level tells you what the n value is. So I need to get the n. The n is a 4. The l value is the type of orbital. So the type of orbital is an s type orbital for sharp. And so therefore, this is an l value of 0. Okay, and now you're going to label the boxes to get the m sub l values. So there's only one box and the middle box and the only box is a 0. So the m sub l value is 0. Okay, is this arrow upwards facing or downwards facing? This arrow is downwards facing. That is going to hell. Therefore, that's negative, and that's an m sub s of negative one half. So hopefully these values worked well for you as I explained them out to you. Okay, now I want to say something here about this one because copper is very, very special. And that is the following. This is the predicted electron configuration in orbital box diagram, which differs from the actual. Okay, so now I'm going to figure out what the actual is. And so the actual electron configuration is right here with the argon and 4s1, 3d10. So what has happened here is the following. Okay, um, so carbon. 
copper has taken one of the electrons from the 4s and moved it into the 3d. And the reason for this is that the filled d subshell, when filled completely or half filled, is very stable. And therefore, this one is the actual electron configuration. Now, we're going to do the actual orbital box diagram of uh, copper as well. This is the actual orbital box diagram. Notice that the 3D subshell is completely filled. And that is actually interior of the 4S. And that's why um, copper has a particular charge to it. There are two different charges for copper. One of them is a 1 plus, one of them is a 2 plus. Okay, and you should see that that 4S electron is a single electron and not now paired. Okay, this is still paramagnetic because it has an unpaired electron. Hopefully that makes sense still. Now, in the, on the periodic table, you should find copper, and copper is, I'm not sure if it's off the charts, but I can see it on here. Now, what's below copper on the periodic table? That's silver. What's below silver on the periodic table? And that's gold. So, these two elements follow the same pattern that copper does for the actual electron configuration. That is, the actual configuration, the actual electron configuration and orbital box diagram for copper, for silver, for gold, has the following. And this is why all three of these elements have a cation charge of a 1 plus, because they lose one electron. Now, silver only has a 1 plus, and that is it, and no other oxidation states besides neutral, that's zero. Copper actually has two oxidation states, and gold has two oxidation states. But the reason that all three that are in the same column on the periodic table, the same grouping, that is the copper, the silver, and the gold, all have a 1 plus oxidation state, is looking at that actual orbital box diagram, what's going to happen? You're going to remove that electron in the highest principal quantum number that's an S-sharp type orbital. And then you will have a filled 3D, 4D, or a 5D shell for copper, silver, gold, respectively. And that will be very stable. All right. Hopefully that makes sense for you. There are predictable electron configurations. There are actual electron configurations. Most of the time, we are going to be doing the predicted electron configurations. There are some specific reasons why your professor or teacher or instructor might ask for the actual electron configuration. There's another grouping here that we'll go over that does have an actual that is different from the predicted. And we'll go into that next time. So I will see you later on. That is another Crazy Hat video from the Crazy Hat Chemist, and this is a super cool hat. I got this from Elise and her father, so thank you very much. I greatly appreciate that. This is a very cherished hat. Give me a thumbs up for that video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'm going to see you next time for more cool chemistry videos. Bye now.